Hi everyone and welcome back to the Class 47 PT YouTube channel and boy have I got a treat for you in store today because today I'm going to be taking a look at this the Hornby South Eastern Class 395 Javelin Train Pack Now I bought this model last weekend from Kerner Model Rail Centre. Over that weekend they was doing a virtual exhibition where they were sending a selection of models for bargain prices. So I was brazing through all the bargains and I stumbled across this, which they were sending these Class 395 Javelins for £121, which I think that's an absolute steal considering the RRP of these is 159 quid, maybe even more than that. So that was an absolute bargain, that was. And so it's like one of those bargains where you just can't resist and you automatically end up buying it. That's exactly what happened here. I saw it, I couldn't resist and I just had to have one. Because the Class 395 Javelin is one of the few modern trains that I do actually like. I do love the sleek modern look of the train and also I have actually been on one of these in real life. Not while it was running. But back in 2012, during the National Railway Museum Rail Fest event, they had one of these on display, and I actually got to go inside the cab of one of these, and in one of the coaches as well. And so that automatically made me like them from the start. Plus as well, seeing a model on one of these on James Mayer's Toy Stories. And so I looked at it in the pictures, and I fell in love with it, and I just had to have it. And it's just arrived in the post, and I'm absolutely excited to get this open so we'll get straight into that now So here we have the Javelin out of the box. Now this is just a four car set. In reality they run as a six car. But Hornby do produce a pack of two extra coaches. So you can have it as a six car. And that's exactly what I shall be doing. Because I shall be getting the other two coaches. So I can have the satisfaction of a four car rake on the layout. Now Hornby have captured the overall look of the prototype superbly and accurately. This looks exactly like the Class 395. In particular they've got the face spot on and this model does have working lights which you shall see later on. And this model also has window wipers on the windscreen and they aren't moulded on, they are separately fitted on. The detail on the bogies is nothing special but then it isn't on the real thing. But we do have some nice detail, we've got the axle boxes there and some pipe work. And just, just look at that nice detail on the wheels as well. And also you've got the third rail pickup shoes as well. And the other bogey has some nice detail as well. On the roof, all these detailed parts you see here, they are separately fitted, they are not moulded. Although admittedly, one of the power cars, it was either this one or the other one over there, this part here had actually become unclipped and I had to clip it back into place, but that's no worry. And also you got this here. You've got this detail here on the top of the roof, which is also separately fitted. And that really does look nice. You've also got the beautiful printing on the warning sign there, as well as the buttons for the door. And some more detail down there. Again, you have some more printed detail. And the printed detail on this is really quite nice. This unit is also named, it's named Hornby Visitor Centre, Margate, Kent, which this 
particular one in real life was named at the Hornby Visitor Centre and the logo there and the name really has been crisply printed on and it really does look nice and again it's just like the real thing it doesn't have an actual nameplate the name itself is just printed on the sides of the body so it is a nice bit of detail that now I do love the detail on top of the roof I mean that's painted in a lovely chrome colour and in particular just take note of the vents or the louvers whichever you choose to call them but what does it for me on the roof is that grill at the top those grills with the fans underneath I mean just look at that I mean that just looks fantastic I don't know if that fan is part of the mould and all there's a separately fitted fan underneath there but that just looks superb to look at and you've got that little grill there as well and that yeah, you know, the detail on that it really is nice on the rear of the unit we have the corridor gangway which is actually made out of rubber I noticed that on both the power cars these had come unclipped on this one one of the sides had come unclipped and on the other one you could see two of the holes where the two sides had become unclipped so I had to clip those back into place so yeah some quality control there but it was easily fixed but also, just take note of those warning signs there, crispy printed on the ends. I mean, fair enough, that detail on the rear there, that's basic, that's moulded on, but then it might be tricky to have it all separately applied. And even then, you can imagine how more expensive it would be. But also, just look at the rear windows on the gangways as well. And of course, you've got the coupling there to couple the power car ends up to the coaches. Now this model also has some cab interior detail. I have had to lift the model up to this angle so you can actually see the cab interior detail in there, but just look at that. Admittedly though, that does look like it's just been a sticker that's just been stuck onto the interior there, but I'm not really fussed about that because just look at the detail on it. I mean, that still looks superb to look at, I think, in my opinion. It's, it's a nice bit of detail to have as well, regardless. Now the livery application on this model really is rather nice. The colours are spot on as you see it in real life and I do love the colour scheme on this with the dark blue colour and the black on the top especially around the windows and you've got the javelin and the southeastern high speed text crispy applied on the sides as well of course as the name as well and so the livery application really spot on. It's a very nice smooth and even coat of paint. I mean there are a few grubby fingerprint marks in a few places although to be honest you can't really see them all that well on camera anyway but they'll get washed off afterwards. And another thing I like as well, just look at the effect there on the black paint. As you can see what I'm talking about, the way that that's been done I mean that just looks fantastic you know that pattern you've got on the ends of the black paint I mean that just looks really superb I think we also have the pantograph on the power cars which is made of plastic although the support if I raise the pantograph this support here is made out of metal but the rest of it is made of plastic so it would have been nice, I will admit, if the pantograph had been made out of metal rather than made out of plastic. But hey ho, that's just a quibble. Although I haven't yet decided if I'm going to run this model with the pantograph raised or with the pantograph lowered because this model can run off the third rail pickups, which is why it's got the pickup shoes as well as having the pantograph so it can run on the overhead so I might actually run this without the pantograph raised actually but I don't know yet, we'll see but the pantograph itself is still very nice as long as it doesn't break especially on a model like this because the last thing we want it to do is to spend this much money and then the pantograph's breaking but yeah I mean regardless even if it would have been nice if the pantograph was made out of metal Regardless of made it out of plastic, it still looks nice in its own way. 
So that's the power cards covered. I've only shown the one on camera because the detail is exactly the same as it is on the other one. So we're going to have a look at the coaches. And so I'm only going to go through the detail on the one because it's exactly the same as on the other. So again, very nice livery application and I love the pattern on the black paint. Really nice bogey detail. Again, nothing amazingly special but nice detail otherwise. And I do quite like the detail on the wheels. You've got the South Eastern High Speed logos, again crispy printed. And I do love the light blue doors on this livery, that's something that does make them stand out quite a bit as well. And you've also got the South Eastern website as well, crispy applied on the sides of the carriages. Again I love the chrome detailing on top of the roof. And again you've got those grills on the top with the fans on them and all those grills or louvres and they really do look nice now admittedly this detail on both of the roofs of the coaches is basic so it is moulded on but I'm not too fussed about that and to be honest the moulding is quite good because you can only really tell that this is moulded detail once you get right up close to it if you're looking at it from further away you wouldn't really be able to tell that that was moulded on so the moulding on that is actually done quite clever, I think. Again, on the gangways, you have the windows in those. That looks really nice. And again, you have this detail on the ends there. And again, the warning signs, crisply applied on. And the couplings to couple the coaches to the power cars. So overall, the detail on this model really is quite nice. I mean, there isn't a lot of detail to this train, but then there isn't in real life. I mean, detail-wise, it's about the same level of detail, or at least perhaps the same level of quality of detail, as that on the Pendolino and the Class 800, also made by Hornby. So, this is quite a nice model in regards to details, but now we need to see how this model runs. So we'll get over to the layout and we'll get it running. OK, so we have got the Class 3 non 5 running around on the layout now, but it has spent the last several minutes or so undergoing a few repairs, at least, which I will get onto in a minute, because there were a few frustrations I had with this model, but all is well now. And just look at that. I mean, just look at how sleek that looks. I mean, there's never been anything else that's quite like this that's ever run on this layout. So it's nice, it's nice to actually see something like this for a change running on Fox Hill Junction. One problem I did have were the coaches derailing on this section here. There was a kink in that section that's now been sorted out. Because it was actually... There was a kink in the track so it wasn't quite as straight, but that's been sorted now. But just look at how smooth that is. It's not running as fast yet because this is just running in. So it doesn't need to go too fast for it to be running, if I'm honest. So the lights have been turned off in the garage, so you can actually see the working lights better. Or if not, shut the shed door but it's just enough so that you can actually see the working lights on the model which you can still see them better now and so for the working lights we actually have head and tail lights and interior lighting the headlights are white and there are interior lighting in that cab interior just there that's directional of course and the tail lights are red So I've got the javelin running a lot faster now. Now that is what you call a high speed train. That's the speed that this was built to run at and was meant to run at. And just look at that. Just look at how fantastic that looks. There's nothing more satisfying than watching a Class 395 at speed. So 
So now I'm going to share one or two frustrations that I had with this model. The first problem I had was, now if you look on both the power cars, the design is completely different. Well, in terms of the coupling. You can see here we have that socket, which underneath it, this is the dummy car by the way, it has the same arrangement for the couplings as on the coaches, the centre coaches, but on the power car that has the motor in, it's completely different as you can see. Why the design is different I've got absolutely no idea why. There was a piece of plastic that was sticking out around there that this coupling slid into basically but that actually broke and so we just simply took that off because I think that bit of plastic anyway was causing problems so upon removing that all is now well. The coupling can swing side to side much more freely I know most people probably have sent it back, I dare say, once that had broke off, but no. I mean, I was tempted to do so, but I was tempted to f fix the problem so I could get this model working and actually enjoy it. Another frustration I had was the pantographs. The tops here, because this is, pan this is all plastic, with this bit here me made out of metal, this bit here at the top that actually clips into place is a couple of lugs that clip into a few small holes which is just about round here excuse my joint finger now these heads actually kept coming off and so what I've done is I've put some glue there to glue them in place you can't actually really tell that there's glue there but I have glued them on to stop that from happening so I mean I think that these pantographs would have been much better as I've said before if they were made out of plastic they're still nice pantographs but I think in terms of build quality they would have been better made out of metal but apart from those teething troubles, especially with in regards to the other one, with that section section of track over there, but that was to do with the layout rather than the model, all is now well. Those teething problem those teething troubles have been cured and the model now runs well. And so I can actually now enjoy this model more running it on the layout. So it's just like a real train really, you know, when the, you first get them when they're first built they do have problems and with them it takes years to iron out the defects of them but once the defects on these models have been sorted you know they really are satisfying to see running around on the layout so with that being said and done that now brings us on to my overall conclusion for the class 3 non fire from Hornby so what is my verdict on it it is a really nice model I know regardless of those two little problems it had they've now been sorted, all is now well and I am glad that I bought this model in the end I was tearing my hair out with it, I'll admit at one stage but since that's now been rectified and I've got this model running like it should I'm now happy with it so I can recommend that you get one of these models if you like the class Rain on fives if you're a modern image modeler and you're modeling the, pati the particular region that these model that these trains run on then I'll definitely get one or if you're a modern image modeler modeling the southern region third rail or the overheads whichever get one <laughs> or if you just like the javelins I would definitely recommend you get one because they are really really nice looking trains and so I shall be getting the extra two coaches for this so I can have the satisfaction of a six car train it's one of the few modern trains that I like because I don't like many of the modern trains I'll be honest but the Javelin is one of the few that I do like and so it's actually nice for me to own one of these in model form thanks to Hornby and so I am glad that I've got one of these for the layout which I shall continue to enjoy for many years to come so now I'm going to leave you with a few shots of the Javelin running around on the layout it's not very often I tend to do that in my review, so I shall do it in this one. So thank you for watching my review on the Hornby Class 395. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. As ever, don't forget to subscribe, smash the like button, post a comment down below if you wish, check out all the other videos that we have on the channel, and I'll see you again next time. But until then, take care.